While Trudy has a perfect disguise kit, do actors really need all this? This must be grease paint. <laughs> oh, face powder of an excellent quality. I use the same brushes for makeup. I forgot my hat. Father? I'm just checking, um... You've got something on your face. Is it makeup? Uh, it uh, might be. Uh, Practicing my disguises, you know me. No, don't, don't touch that! No, no! Ah, Mrs. Hudson, with our tea. Not quite. We have a visitor. However, the lady is not so much angry as perplexed. Good day to you, gentlemen. My name is Mary Sutherland. I have come to you, Mr. Holmes, because I would give everything I have to know what has become of Mr. Hosmer Angel. Why the haste, Miss Sutherland? Mr. Hosmer Angel has disappeared, and my father, Mr. Winterbank, will do nothing. It makes me so angry. Mr. Windybank is your stepfather, surely, since the name is different? Well, indeed, I call him father, although he is barely older than myself. And your mother is alive? Oh, yes. Although I wasn't best pleased when she married again, and so soon after father's death, and to a man so much younger than herself. What is your connection with Mr. Hosmer Angel? I met him at the Gasfitters' Ball. Mr. Windybank did not wish for me a mother to attend. He never did wish us to go anywhere, but this time I was quite set on it. Fortunately, he left for France upon some business, and so didn't have any say in it. And I met Mr. Angel that night. We met again after that and would take walks together, but then Father returned, and we could no longer meet. Why was your stepfather against your going anywhere? Well, he didn't like anything of that sort. He used to say that a woman should be happy in her own family circle. Did Mr. Hosmer Angel make no attempt to see you? Well, Father was going off again in a week. And Hosmer wrote and said that it would be better for us not to see each other until Father had gone. After that, he stopped writing. Where does Mr. Angel live? I don't know exactly. I address all of his letters to the Leadenhall Street Post Office for collection. Were you engaged? Oh yes, Mr. Holmes. Right after the first walk that we took. Do you have your own income? I do, from an inheritance. It was left to me by my Uncle Ned in Auckland. Then you have all that you could wish for, naturally. Well, I live at home and don't wish to be a burden to my family, so they have the use of the money. Is there anything else that you can tell me about Mr. Angel? He is a very shy man. He would rather walk with me in the evening, so as to be discreet. I put a missing persons notice in last Saturday's Chronicle. 
Here's a copy, and a letter from him. Ha <laughs> ha! A love letter. Hmm, yes. I see. As I anticipated, this validates my deductions perfectly. What deductions, Mr... Mr. Wilde. Holmes. Tell her. This is strange. The love letter is typewritten. Good quality paper, quite smooth. Fairly common ink, nothing special. We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more. Miss Sutherland only met with Hosmer Angel while the stepfather was absent. Hosmer Angel decided not to leave his signature. Let's study this letter more closely. There are some letters with typographical defects. Miss Sutherland, do you have any other letters from Mr. Angel? Unfortunately not. But I've brought my father's letter from Paris. Here it is. The stepfather's letter is also typewritten. Mm, I hope that you'll be an obedient girl. Mm. Take my advice, stay at home. Miss Sutherland's stepfather's signature. The stepfather is trying to keep the daughter at home. Quite common paper with a light yellow tint. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Let's study this letter more closely. There are some letters with typographical defects. Both letters have typographical defects. They merit further attention. <laughs> This letter has a defect. Ah, and it's the same letter with the same defect in both instances. One more letter with a defect. Another letter match with the same defects. One more letter with a defect. Another letter match with the same defects. So, based on the specific defects, we could say that these letters were composed on the same typewriter. Come on, Toby, your soap bath couldn't have been as bad as that. Thanks to Wild, my analysis table has been completely destroyed.
You should try to let Mr. Hosmer Angel vanish from your memory, as he has done from your life. Then you don't think I'll see him again? I fear not. Then what has happened to him? Your stepfather married your mother for her money, and also enjoyed the use of your income. But with your personal advantages, it was clear that you would not remain single for long, even with him keeping you at home. He disguised himself and reappeared as Mr. Hosmer Angel. He brought you as far as the church door and then conveniently slipped away. To bring you to this conclusion in such a dramatic manner that it would leave a permanent impression upon your mind. You have been cruelly tricked, Miss Sutherland. Oh, Mr. Holmes. No, I, I, I can't believe it. But we were engaged. Oh, it's horrible to think about. But thank you for all you have done, Mr. Holmes. Holmes! You could have been more diplomatic. What is going on? Go back to your flat and stay there with Kate. It's ticking. I see wires inside. They could be connected to the cover. I see wires inside. They could be connected to the cover. A fancy ticking homemade gift from a secret admirer. I have two minutes to defuse it. source of electricity for the detonation. A package with explosive material. There are wires going in and out. It's useless to predict how they might be tangled up inside. There are wires attached to the bell and hammer. When the alarm triggers, the bomb will explode. Aha! This solenoid protects the bomb from being easily diffused. If it loses its power supply, it will close contact between the secondary chain wires and the bomb will explode.
What happened? Just a small bomb. Somebody wants to kill me? What for? I don't believe that you were the target. Who then? Mr. Holmes, are you all right? I saw the bloke. I tried to catch him, but he escaped. Can you describe the man? Uh, he was thin, about 5'5", five five, with black hair and a hair lip. Wiggins, tell us everything you saw. The fellow was watching your place, so I thought maybe he's a client. But then he took something out of his jacket and threw it, smashing your window. I shouted at him and he took off. I grabbed him by the sleeve, but he wriggled out of his jacket and left it. I'm sorry I didn't catch him, Mr. Holmes. You did very well, Wiggins. Now, let's take a look at that jacket. Here it is. Good job, Wiggins. Here's a penny. Oh, thanks, Mr. Holmes. J.T. are the owner's initials. Let's see what's inside. There could be a hidden message that's been written with some lemon juice. No, don't touch anything else. There are ink stains on this piece of paper. I could read the text with the help of my analysis table if Wilde hadn't already destroyed it. A poem. But what does it mean? This isn't a poem. It's a song called Rally Mohawks. That great moment when America rebelled against England's dominance. Then rally, boys, and hasten on to meet our chiefs at the Green Dragon. And I bet they hoisted a tankard of ale and invented a new nation. Along with deciding if this was the week they got to dump some tea into Yon Harbor. <laughs> Why ever did he keep such a song in his pocket? Here it is. That's all I can do for now. Let's try and get a few hours of sleep. How can you sleep when there is someone trying to kill me? How selfish. map of London and it's a
Oh my, I see you and Kate are best friends already. It's incredible how quickly Mr. Wilde has understood Fa- Did you sleep well, Kate? Very well, thank you, Father. Is that wild? Whatever is he doing now? He's transforming you into a legend. Oh, silly man. Kate, what's the matter? Well, I just came by to tell you that I'm going to the zoo with Alice. We'll be having lunch in town. The zoo? What on earth for? <laughs> Perhaps because it is my birthday today? I fooled you, didn't I? Of course I remembered. Here's some spending money. Go and enjoy your special day. All right. I'll go then. Kate. You never do anything right. All right, all right. Come here. I've had enough of you not caring about me. I do care. I've just had a, a difficult night. Yes, Alice told me about the bomb, but you wouldn't. Kate, I... I only want to protect you. You don't understand anything. I wish Alice would adopt me. Don't be ridiculous. I don't know why my parents entrusted me to you. Did they really know you? Kate, come back. Damn it. Such a waste. This Alice, I have an odd sense about her. It's as if she's playing with Kate's feelings. This would be a good opportunity to investigate Alice's flat while they're absent. Mrs. Hudson is not at home. Force is not an option. I should find another way inside Alice's flat. A back room. A back room. For My archive. I can always consult with it. It appears that Alice sleeps in this armchair, as uncomfortable as that must be. Alice has recently used this. A soothing drug to aid sleep. It has no smell. Uh, it has a bitter taste. 
No smell, a bit of taste. It's a tincture of barbiturals. Alice prepared a gift for Kate. She remembered her birthday. Well, women are good at that sort of thing. A photograph, Sylvia. Alice's childhood was spent with her aunt, until the aunt's death. Alice was unhappy with all of her adopted families. She's spying on me. It looks as though Alice has not slept here for a long time. Her full name is Alice Floella Hamilton. Strange taste in literature. Sarah de Bouvier is Alice's mother. Alice used her mother's name to lease the flat. Kate probably sleeps here. This lock is quite new.
The wheelchair is the same as the one in the photograph above. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. It's my distant ancestor, Horace Vernon. Alice knows about Zacharias Greystoke, the victim from the bowling club. I solved that crime. Alice knows about Zacharias Greystoke, the victim from the bowling club. I solved that crime. Alice is talking with her father, William Hamilton. William Hamilton. But I know him. He was a bandit who I arrested 20 years ago. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham. My word, look at this setup. Alice practices spiritual. Charles Darwin, English naturalist and geologist. I finished here, time to go.
Here it is. This is a good opportunity to investigate the Green Dragon Tavern alone. I have to be careful in this den of iniquity. Come on, Bobby, push back! Hey you, shut up! Well done, Top Bobby! On Adam. I put a penny on Adam winning. I should be quiet so that I can listen to what people are saying. There's no one to Let's eavesdrop on. Celebrate! <laughs> sort of. Bottoms up. an illegal gambling den. Huh? I'd drink to forget the hard drink. <laughs> Celebrate! There's no one to eavesdrop on from here. Cheers! Bombs out. Get lost! I can hear nothing from here. I can hear nothing from here. I'll do to forget the hard drink. <laughs> Damn. 
The attack on Holmes failed. Some kind of pass for getting inside. Hey, this is Martin. I drink to forget that I drink. <laughs> Let's celebrate. <laughs> the man with the air lip. He was afraid. He ran upstairs. My attack, I should find a way to go upstairs. Let's celebrate. <laughs> Truth. Bottoms up. Hey, what are you looking for? Get lost. Let's celebrate. Hey, Mug Hunter, what do you think you're Truth. doing? Get out of here. Bottoms up. Let's celebrate. <laughs> I drink to forget that I drink. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Let's celebrate. Cheers. Bottoms up. <laughs> Pour me a double. I'm going outside for a cigarette. As a pass, I could steal it to gain entry. Celebrate. <laughs> you Cheers. can get in. Bottoms up. Is the boss at his place? Yeah, he's waiting for you. A man. I should find a way to follow him. Let's 
celebrate. <laughs> Cheers. I need a refill. on my side. Bid out for a shilling. Bowling. Ah, it's my lucky day. I have to get across to the other side. Perhaps from there I can reach the guarded area. Hey, what do you think you're doing? That's private. Shilling. Gamble Bowling. or get out. Ah, it's my lucky day. A well-cared-for hat. They allow knives here. Ah, it's my lucky day. Let's go. Oh, this is a mirror to look at the cards during the deal. A button for a mechanism. He uses the extra cards to cheat. This is a holdout that deals extra cards. The rope leads from one sleeve to the other. If the rope's cut, it will release the hidden cards and expose his trick. That's what I'll need to do for a diversion, then I can get outside. Ah, it's my lucky day. Fool you, snappy. Think faster. They allow knives here. Lucky's on my side. Get out, Christian. All in. Ah, it's my lucky day. Fool. Are you lucky. snappy? Think faster. Lucky's on my side. You loser. All in. I can smell the money. What are you looking at? Get out, fresh chili. Are you snappy? You loser. Yeah, I'm gonna win. Lucky's on my side. Get out, fresh chili. All in. Ah, it's my lucky day. Snappy.
They only left this room recently. Clever invention for hiding gambling items in the event of a police raid. Jack Cole, I remember him from the raid three years ago. Doesn't look like a key from an ordinary door. Crack. There might be something behind the cupboard. The man from the gambling room is the same car cheating accessory. It's evident that all of these items were stolen by Jack Cole's gang. It's the suitcase belonging to that fellow with the hair lip. No doubt these things were stolen. Our man, most likely with his family. After moving into our new home, Butler's pawn shop on Lambeth Street. This fellow pawned his belongings. He must be in great need of money. He apparently lives near this pawn shop. What's going on in there? Bastard, I'll kill you! Bye. 
bastard, I'll kill you! You... you are Alice, yeah? Listen, Holmes suspects something. What are you talking about? You must be more discreet. Your little game with his daughter... No, no, no! Too soft, Holmes! But... you are Mr. Holmes. Why on earth? You see, she recognized you. And I expected it. You must live the character. You see... Now you... Go upstairs right away, or I will drive you back to that pub. Understood? And there you are. You've got it. I... Uh, <laughs> all right. But seriously, you should take acting classes. I know that you came here to avenge your father. You moved into my building, you've spied on me, and now you prepare your revenge through my own daughter. Don't be such a fool. I adore your daughter. You see conspiracies in everything. I have good reason to. Perhaps you forget what I do for a living. How I pity you. You mistake sincerity for dishonesty. Do you dare tell me that your presence here is accidental? Obviously not. When the opportunity arose for me to meet you, then I came, but not with hatred, rather more with fascination. I had hoped to learn something about my father from you. Some answers as to my identity. When, strangely enough, I find that you yourself are a riddle. Even to your own daughter. You shouldn't have involved my daughter in your sick problems. You're only confusing her. It's over. She doesn't know it yet, but I'll be leaving soon. I've finished my business here, and you will never hear from me again. Good. But you better speak to me directly. No being furtive. I had no idea that you could show such a high level of indulgence towards the children of criminals. You... I'm going. Please, I beg you, do not spoil my last moments with Caitlin. <laughs> 